是不算钱之后回来关。
Judges and number one. Today I will tell you a story called the magic paintbrush. The magic paintbrush. Rose loved drawing. She was very poor and didn't have pens or pencil. She drew picture in the sand with stickers. One day, an old woman saw Rose and say, "Hello." Here's a pen brush and some paper for you. Thank you, smiled Rose. She was so happy. Hmm, what can I paint? She thought. She looked around and saw a duck on a pond. I know, I'll paint a duck. So she did. Suddenly, the duck fell off the paper and onto the pond. Wow! She said, "A magic paintbrush." Rose was a very kind girl, and she painted pictures for everyone in her village. She painted a cow for the farmer, pencils for the teacher, and toys for all the children. The king heard about the magic paintbrush and sent a soldier to find Rose. 
Come with me," said the soldier. "The king wants you to pay some money for him." But he already rich," said Rose. "I only plan to help poor people." But nasty soldier took Rose to the king. "Pay me a tree with lots of money on it," he shouted. Rose was brave and said, "No!" So the king sent her to prison. But Rose painted a key for the door. Thank you for listening. Good morning, everyone. I'm number two. Today, I'm going to read Eric Lee Engine. Eric Lee Engine. One day, there was a big storm. Lightning struck a mountain, and a huge rock rolled onto the train line. Seagull saw what happened. He called his friends, Rabbit, Fox, and Mouse. We must move it. The ten fifty London train will be here in one hour," said Rabbit. The animals tried to move it. They pushed and pushed, but it would not move. I know," said Fox. Let's get Eric the engine. He's stronger than all of us. There's no time," said Mouse. "I'll get him!" shouted Seagull. "Help! There's a rope on the train line, and the London train is coming very soon." Eric took it his whistle and called his friend. All the engines gathered around. Eric was big and strong, but not very fast. He asked the express train to go ahead. "You go first, then you," said Eric, and he sent his friend ahead. "I'll follow you." The engines raced along, but the London train was getting closer. The trains arrived. The two express train pushed, but the rock wouldn't move. The London train was coming over the hill. Two more engines arrived, and they pushed too. The rock moved a little, but the London train was coming around the corner. They can't do it," said Mouse. Then Eric arrived. He tooted his whistle and pushed with all his strength. He pushed the four engines, and the four engines pushed the rock. Thank you for listening. The magic fish. Every day, Robert's grandfather went fishing. 
One day, Robert asked to go to. Well, I want to catch the fish, the magic fish. The first person to it will it will become the cleverest person in the world. Can you help me? Yes, said Robert. And they went fishing. First, they caught a yellow fish with purple spots. Wow, is that a magic fish? Asked Robert. No, said his grandfather. Then they caught a blue fish with red strips. Is that a magic fish? Asked Robert. No, said his grandfather. Suddenly, they caught a big, beautiful silverfish with pink and green diamonds. Robert's grandfather jumped for joy. It was the magic fish. They started to cook the fish, and his grandfather went to get some more wood. He asked Robert to watch the fish, but not no, but not to eat any of it. Robert watched the fish very carefully. He saw a tiny bubble on its tail. He touched it with his finger. Bop! The bubble burst. The fish was very hot and burned his finger. Ouch! He put his finger in his mouth. When his grandfather came back, he saw that something was different. Did you touch the fish? Asked his grandfather. Yes, I'm sorry, said Robert. His grandfather sighed a heavy sigh and gave Robert a big hug. The magic fish chose you. You are the cleverest boy in the world, and I'm the proudest grandfather ever. Thank you for listening. 三号同学一分四十五秒。四号同学，请上台，朗读篇章第三篇。Good morning, judges. I'm number four. Today, I'm going to read you a story. My topic is the magic paintbrush. Rose loved drawing. She was very poor and didn't have pens or pencils. She drew pictures in the sand with sticks. One day, an old woman saw Rose and said, "Hello. Here's a paintbrush and some paper for you." Thank you," smiled Rose. She was so happy. Hmm, what can I paint? She thought. She looked around and saw a duck on the pond. I know. I'll paint a duck. So she did. Suddenly, the duck flew off the paper and onto the pond. Wow! She said, "A magic paintbrush." Rose was a very kind girl, and she painted pictures for everyone in her village. She painted a cow for the farmer, pencils for the teacher, and toys for all the children. The king heard about the magic paintbrush and sent a soldier to find Rose. "Come with me," said the soldier. "The king wants to pay some money for him." "But he's already rich," said Rose. "I only paint to help poor people." But the nasty soldier took Rose to the king. "Pay me a tree with lots of money on it!" he shouted. Rose was brave and said, "No!" So the king sent her to prison. But Rose painted a key for the door and a horse to help her escape. The king chased after her, so she painted a big hole and splat. The king fell in. Today. Rose only uses a magic paintbrush to help people who really, really need help. Thank you for listening. 四号同学，请下台。
五号同学，请上台朗读篇章第二篇。Good morning, everyone. I'm number five. Today, I'm going to tell you a story about Robin Hood. Robin Hood. People have told stories about Robin Hood for more than seven hundred years. Nobody knows if he was a real person or an invented character. In the legends, Robin was extremely intelligent and had a playful sense of humor. He loved playing tricks on people. Pick a card, any card. The story say that Robin Hood was a skilled archer, and he always carried a bow and arrow. Ha <laughs> ha! Too easy. He wore green clothes and a hat with a green feather. He lived in Sherwood Forest with a group of outlaws or criminals known as his merry men. The group included Ferret Tuck, hmm, yummy, Little John, who was unusually tall. Little is just my nickname, and Robin's true love. Maid Marian, take that! Sherwood Forest was a royal hunting forest near Nottingham in England. Most people thought that forests were dangerous places to go. People traveling through the forest were often robbed by outlaws. Your money, please, my lord. Oh no! It's Robin Hood. The story says that Robin Hood only took money from rich people so that he could give it to people who needed it. So he became for robbing from the rich and giving to the poor. Here you are, my dear. Oh, thank you, Robin. The sheriff of Nottingham was Robin's arch enemy. It was the sheriff's job to keep the woods safe and to make sure that nobody stole the king's deer. What's that? Is that Robin Hood? The sheriff of Nottingham tried to catch Robin Hood, but never succeeded. Oh no! Not again. Centuries ago. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Monster shopping trip. Harry Henry is a handsome green monster. He lives in a small house in the forest. All his friends live nearby. Soon, it is Harry's birthday. Looney Loo and Gorgonzola decide to buy him a present. What shall we buy him? They ask. What about a camera? No, he's got a camera. How about a big box of chocolate? No, let's buy him a new pair of shorts. No, he's got some new shorts. Looney Loo and Gorgonzola just don't know what to buy him. I know," said Looney Loo. "Let's go shopping in London. We can visit Harry Henry's cousin, Big Ben, and ask him what to buy. Good idea." So they got the train to London. Big Ben waited for them at the station. Hello," he said. "We want to buy a present for Harry Henry." They told him. "I just know the place," said Big Ben, who loves computer game. They bought a very special monster computer game for catching horrible humans. 
Harry Henry will love it. Next, they went to a very smart shop called Herot. They went to the special floor for monsters and look at the very smart clothes. Everything was monstrously monstrous because Harry Henry is quite a smart monster. Gorgonzola bought him a tie which lights up and sings a monster. Happy birthday song. Finally, they went to an amazing cake shop. They bought the biggest, most monster cake they could find. They put it in the box to take it to Harry Henry's birthday party. The next day, Lu Ning Lu, Gorgonzola. Thank you for your attention. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Englot, and today I'm going to read George and the Dragon. George and the Dragon. Once upon a time, there was a brave knight called George. George had a lot of adventures as he traveled by course across many lands. One day, he came to a small village and met the man who lived in a cave next to the village. The hermit told a knight about the awful things that happened there. A terrible dragon had come to live in the lake and attacked the village every day. The villagers knew what to do. First, they gave the dragon all their food. The dragon took all their food and still attacked the village. So then the villagers gave the dragon all the animals from their farms. The dragon took all their animals but continued to attack the village. So then they gave the dragon all the, all the gold and jewels. The dragon took all their money but was still not satisfied. The king sent his army to try to capture the dragon but the dragon was too strong and the army were too scared and ran away. With nothing left to give, the king could only think of one thing to help protect his people. He sent his only daughter, the princess, to lake to wait for the dragon. When George heard this, he rode as fast as he could to lake. Just then, the dragon jumped out from lake and was going to eat the princess. George attacked the dragon. He thought very bravely, won the fight and killed the dragon. Today rose, today, today the story of George Bravely is remembered and George is Thank you for listening. Good morning, teachers. I'm number eight. Today, my topic is Robin Hood. People have told stories about Robin Hood for more than 700 years. Nobody knows if he was a real person 
or an invented character. In the legends, Robin was extremely intelligent and had a playful sense of humor. He loved playing tricks on people. Pick a card, any card. The story said that Robin Hood was a skilled archer, and he always carried a bow and arrow. Ha ha! Too easy. He wore green clothes and a hat with a green feather. He lived in a Sherwood Forest with a group of outlaws or criminals, known as his Merry Men. The group included Fire Tuck, mmm, yummy, Little John, who was unusually tall. Little is just my nickname, and the Robin's true love. Made Marion. Take that! Sherwood Forest was a royal hunting forest near Nottingham in England. Most people thought that forests were dangerous places to go. People traveling through the forest were robbed up the by outlaws. Your money, please, my lord. Oh no! It's Robin Hood. The story said that Robin Hood only took money from rich people. So that he could give it to people who needed it, so he became famous for robbing from the rich and giving to the poor. Here you are, my dear. Oh, thank you, Robin. The sheriff of Nottingham was Robin's arch enemy. It was the sheriff's job to keep the woods safe and to make sure that nobody stole the king's steel. What's that? Is that Robin Hood? Thank you for your support. 九号同学，请上台，朗读篇章第六篇。Good morning, everyone. I'm number nine. Today, I'm going to read you a story. Eric the Engine. Eric the Engine. One day, there was a big storm. Lightning struck a mountain. And a huge rock rolled onto the train line. Seagull saw what happened. He called his friends, Rabbit, Fox, and Mouse. We must move it. The 10:15 London train will be here in one hour, says Rabbit. The animals tried to move it. They pushed and pushed, but it would not move. I know," says Fox. "Let's get Eric the engine. He is stronger than all of us." There's no time," says Mouse. "I'll get him!" shouted Seagull. "Help! There is a rock on the train line, and the London train is coming very soon." Eric took his whistle and called his friends. All the engines gathered round. Eric was big and strong, but not very fast. He asked to the express train to go ahead. "You go first, then you," says Eric, and he sent his friends ahead. "I'll follow you." The engines raced along, but the London train was getting closer. The trains arrived. The two express trains. Pushed, but the rock wouldn't move. The London train was coming over the hill. Two more engines arrived, and they pushed too. The rock moved a little, but the London train is. Thank you for listening. 
民生，我们预计三分钟后开始比赛。各位观众，我们预计一分钟后开始。十号同学，请上台朗读篇章第五篇。
Good morning, everyone. My number is ten. Today, I want to tell you a story. The magic fish. Every day, Robert's grandfather went fishing. One day, Robert asked to go too. Wow! I want to catch the magic fish. The first person to eat it will become the cleverest person in the world. Can you help me? Yes, said Robert, and they went fishing. First, they caught a yellow fish with purple spots. Wow! Is that the magic fish? Asked Robert. No, said his grandfather. Then they caught a blue fish with red stripes. Is that the magic fish? Asked Robert. No, said his grandfather. Suddenly, they caught a big, beautiful silver fish with pink and green diamonds. Robert's grandfather jumped for joy. It was the magic fish. They started to cook the fish, and his grandfather went to get some more wood. He asked Robert to wash the fish, but not to eat any of it. Robert watched the fish very carefully. He saw a tiny bubble on its tail. He touched it with his finger. Pop! The bubble burst. The fish was very hot and burned his finger. Ouch! He put his finger in his mouth. Thank you for your listening. Good morning, teachers. I'm Jeremy. My story is George and the Dragon. Once upon a time. There was a brave knight called George. George had lots of adventures as he traveled by horse across many lands. One day, he came to a small village and met a man who lived in the cave next to the village. The hermit told the knight about the awful things that were happening there. A terrible dragon had come to live in the lake and attacked the village every day. The villagers didn't know what to do. First, they gave the dragon all their food, but the dragon just took the food and still attacked the village. So then the villagers gave the dragon all the animals from their farms. The dragon took all the animals but continued to attack the villagers. So then they gave the dragon all their gold and jewels. The dragon just took their money. But still was not satisfied. The king sent his army to try and capture the dragon, but the dragon was too strong, and the knights of the army were too scared, and they ran away. With nothing left to give, the king could only think of one thing to help protect his people. He sent his only daughter, the princess, to the lake to wait for the dragon. When George heard this, he rode as fast as he could to the lake. Just then, the dragon jumped out from the lake and was going to eat the princess. George attacked the dragon. He fought very bravely. 
Won't they fight and kill the dragon? George and the princess returned to the village, and everyone was very pleased. Let me see. Thank you. Monster shopping trip. Harry Henry is a handsome green monster. He lives in a small house in the forest. All his friends live nearby. Soon it is Harry's birthday. Looney Lou and Gorgonzola decided to buy him a present. What shall I buy him? They ask. What about a camera? No, he's got a camera. How about a big box of chocolates? No. Let's buy him a new pair of shorts. No, he's got some new shorts. Looney Lou and Gorgonzola just don't know what to buy him. I know," said Looney Lou. "Let's go shopping in London. We can visit Harry Harry's cousin Big Ben and ask him what to buy." Good idea. So they got the train to London. Big Ben waited for them at the station. "Hello," he said. "We want to buy a present for Harry Henry." They told him, "I know just the place," said Big Ben, who loves computer games. They bought a very special monster computer game for catching horrible humans. Harry, Harry will love it. Next, they went to a very smart shop called Harrods. They went to a special floor for monsters and looked at the very smart clothes. Everything was monstrously monstrous. Because Harry Henry is quite a smart monster, Gordon Zola bought him a tie which lights up and sings a monster happy birthday song. Finally, they went to an amazing cake shop. They bought the biggest, most monster cake they could find. They put it in a box to take it to Harry Henry's birthday party. Good morning. I'm number thirteen. Today I'm going to tell you a story called "The Magic Paintbrush." Rose loved drawing. She was very poor and didn't have paints or pencils. She drew pictures in the sand with sticks. One day, an old woman saw Rose and said, "Hello, here's a paintbrush and some paper for you." Thank you," smiled Rose. She was so happy. Hmm, what can I paint? She thought. She looked around and saw a duck on the pond. I know. I'll paint the duck. So she did. Suddenly, the duck flew off the paper and onto the pond. Wow! She said, "A magic paintbrush." 
Rose was a very kind girl, and she painted pictures for everyone in her village. She painted a cow for the farmer, pencils for the teacher, and toys for all the children. The king heard about the magic paintbrush and sent a soldier to find Rose. Come with me," said the soldier. "The king wants you to pay some money for him." But he's already rich," said Rose. "I only paint to help poor people." But the nasty soldier took Rose to the king. "Paint me a tree with lots of money on it!" he shouted. Rose was brave and said no. So the king sent her to prison. But Rose painted a key for the door and a horse to help her escape. The king chased after her, so she painted a big hole, and splat! The king fell in. Today, Rose only uses her magic paintbrush to help people who really, really need help. This is all about my story. Thank you for listening. Good morning, everyone. I am number fourteen. Today, I'm going to read a story. Eric the Engine. One day, there was a big storm. Lightning struck a mountain, and a huge rock rolled onto the train line. Seagull saw what happened. He called his friends, rabbit, fox, and mouse. We must move it. The ten fifteen London train will be here in one hour," said rabbit. The animals tried to move it. They pushed. And pushed, but it would not move. I know," said Fox. "Let's get Eric the NG. He's stronger than all of us." There's no time," said Mouse. "I will get him," shouted Seagull. "Help! There is a rock on the train line, and the London train is coming very soon." Eric tooted his whistle and called his friends. All the engines gathered around. Eric was big and strong, but not very fast. He asked the express trains to go ahead. "You go first, then you," said Eric, and he sent his friends ahead. "I will follow you." The engines raced along, but the London train was getting closer. The trains arrived. The two express trains pushed, but the rock wouldn't move. The London train was coming over the hill. Thank you for listening.
Good morning, dear judges and my friends. I'm number fifteen. Today, my topic is the magic fish. Every day, Robert's grandfather went fishing. One day, Robert asked to go to. Well, I want to get some magic fish. The first person to eat it will become the cleverest person in the world. Can you help me? Yes, said Robert, and they went fishing. First, they caught a the yellow fish with purple spots. Wow, is that a magic fish? Asked Robert. No, said his grandfather. Then they caught a the blue fish with red stripes. Is that a magic fish? Asked Robert. No, said his grandfather. Suddenly, they caught a the big, beautiful silver fish with pink and green diamonds. Robert's grandfather jumped for joy. It was the magic fish. They started to cook the fish, and his grandfather went to get some more wood. He asked Robert to watch the fish, but not to eat any of it. Robert watched the fish very carefully. He saw a tiny bubble on its tail. He touched it with his finger. Pop! The bubble burst. The fish was very hard and burned his finger. Ouch! He put his finger in his mouth. When his grandfather came back, he saw that something was different. Did you touch the fish? And his grandfather. Yes, I'm sorry," said Robert. His grandfather signed a happy sign and gave Robert a big hug. The magic fish chose you. You are the cleverest boy in the world, and I am the proudest grandfather ever. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day. Good morning, everyone. I'm number sixteen. Today, I will tell you the story of George and the Dragon. George and the Dragon. Once upon a time, there was a brave knight called George. George had lots of adventures as he traveled by horse across many lands. One day, he came to a small village and met a man who lived in a cave next to the village. The hermit told the knight about the awful thing that was happening there. A terrible dragon had come to live in the lake and attack the village every day. The villagers didn't know what to do. First, they gave the dragon all their food, but the dragon just took the food and still attacked the village. So then, the villagers gave the dragon all the animals from their farms. The dragon took all the animals, but continued to attack the villagers. So then, they gave the dragon all their gold and jewels. The dragon took all their money, but still was not satisfied. The king sent his army to try and capture the dragon, but the dragon was too strong, and the knights of the army were too scared, and they ran away with nothing left to give. 
the king could only think of one thing to help protect his people. Thank you for listening. Hi, everyone. I'm number seventeen. The story I'm going to read is Monster Shopping Trip. Harry Henry is a handsome green monster. He lives in a small house in the forest. All his friends live nearby. Soon it is Harry's birthday. Looney Lou and Gorgonzola decide to buy him a present. What should we buy him? They ask. What about a camera? No, he's got a camera. How about a big box of chocolates? No. Let's buy him a new pair of shorts. No, he's got some new shorts. Looney Lou and Gorgonzola just don't know what to buy him. I know," said Looney Lou. "Let's go shopping in London. We can visit Harry Henry's cousin Big Ben and ask him what to buy. Good idea." So they got the train to London. Big Ben waited for them at the station. Hello, he said. We want to buy a present for Harry Henry. They told him. I know just the place," said Big Ben, who loves computer games. They bought a very special monster computer game for catching horrible humans. Harry Henry will love it. Next, they went to a very smart shop called Harrods. They went to the special floor for monsters and looked at the very smart clothes. Everything was monstrously monstrous. Thank you for listening. Good morning, everyone. I'm number eighteen. My topic is Eric the Engine. One day, there was a big storm. Lightning struck a mountain, and a huge rock rolled onto the train line. Seagull saw what happened. He called his friends. Rabbit, fox, and mouse. We must move it. The ten fifteen London train will be here in one hour," said Rabbit. The animals tried to move it. They pushed and pushed, but it would not move. I know," said Fox. "Let's get Eric the engine. He's stronger than all of us." There's no time," said Mouse. I'll get him," shouted Seagull. 
Help! There is a rug on the train line, and the London train is coming very soon. Eric took his whistle and called his friends. All the engines gathered around. Eric was big and strong, but not very fast. He asked the express trains to go ahead. You go first, then you," said Eric, and he sent his friends ahead. "I'll follow you." The engines raced along, but the London train was getting closer. The trains arrived. The two express trains pushed, but the rock wouldn't move. The London train was coming over the hill. Two more engines arrived, and they pushed too. The rock moved a little. But the London train was coming round the corner. Two more engines. They can't do it," said Mouse. Then Eric arrived. He took his whistle and pushed with all his strength. He pushed the first. Thank you for listening. Ah, 同学，请下台。Hello, everyone. My name is Elsa. Today, I'm going to tell you a story about the magic fish. Every day, Robert's grandfather went fishing. One day, Robert asked to go to. Well, I want to catch the magic fish. The first person to eat it will become the cleverest person in the world. Can you help me? Yes, said Robert, and they went fishing. First, they caught a yellow fish with purple spots. Wow! Is that the magic fish? Asked Robert. No, said his grandfather. Then they caught a blue fish with red stripes. Is that the magic fish? Asked Robert. No, said his grandfather. Suddenly, they caught a big, beautiful silver fish with pink and green diamonds. Robert's grandfather jumped for joy. It was the magic fish. They started to cook the fish, and his grandfather went to get some more wood. He asked Robert to watch the fish, but not to eat any of it. Robert watched the fish very carefully. He saw a tiny bubble on its tail. He touched it with his finger. Pop! The bubble burst. The fish was very hot and burned his finger. Ouch! He put his finger in his mouth. When his grandfather came back, he saw that something was different. Do you touch the fish? Asked his grandfather. Yes, I'm sorry, said Robert. His grandfather sighed a happy sigh and gave Robert a big hug. The magic fish chose you. You are the cleverest boy in the world, and I am the proudest grandfather ever. Thank you for listening. Oh. 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 Oh.